All right, let's see what the community wants to watch this week. All right, we've got a poll in the community tab. Wow, 208 votes. All right, let's see what they say. All right, it's the cyberpunk optimization video. We've already covered that. Battery life, it's not that interesting of a topic. True Doc performance, now that one could be interesting. So don't forget to make a video about this and please explain how does it work technically. Oh, slow down there, Abu. That's a little bit of an aggressive take. You don't need to vote this. This is educational material. Hey, hey, man, you're not my boss. You don't get to just tell me what to do. This should be prioritized by technology reviewers. Well, you're not exactly wrong. It is for science. Well, let's go ahead and test it out. All right, so let's run the numbers really quick. 720p is gonna be 1280 pixels wide by 720 pixels tall. And when you do the math, that turns out to be roughly 921,000 pixels that need to be generated. Multiplying that by the 60 frames per second, we get right at about 55.2 million pixels that need to be generated per second to get to that 720p 60 frames per second. 1080p is going to be measuring at 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels tall. Multiplying it out at 30 frames per second, we get right at 62.5 million pixels per second that need to be generated. So overall, 720p at 60 frames is about 88% of the amount of pixels that need to be generated than 1080p at 30 frames per second. That would suggest that 720p at 60 frames per second is going to be more efficient than 1080p, and most handheld gamers will love the extra battery life. As good as the theory sounds, we have to test it in practice. So what hardware are we going to actually test? Of course, the Steam Deck is a fan favorite here on the channel, but unfortunately with an 800p resolution monitor, I just don't want to have to mess with docked mode or trying to calculate other types of things, so we're going to have to save that one for another day. Of course, I would have loved to run this experiment on my AOK -OK Zoe, but if y'all haven't been paying attention to the news, AOK -OK Zoe had a little bit of an issue when it comes to their funding with the Kickstarter program, so we're still just going to have to wait patiently until we get our hands on that device. So with very few handhelds at my disposal for this experiment, I'm going to turn my glance over to my Asus Zephyrus Duo that has the 6900HX. The 6900HX comes equipped with the same Radeon 680M as the 6800U, though it is capable of higher wattages than its thin and light sibling. But to make things fair, I'm going to lock the processor to 45 watts to ensure both a stable 60fps and 30fps condition. Now for the tricky part of the experiment. What games are we going to actually try? Just as we saw with our Cyberpunk 2077 optimization video, some of the options within the game, as well as the driver, don't necessarily lock our frame rates and our power consumption to the limits that we want to see. In some games, the hardware continues to pump frames out beyond our desired capped frame rate, making our data less reliable. However, I've got a decent selection of popular games that should fit the bill just nicely. First up is Horizon Zero Dawn, and this game has been a classic here on our channel because it's such a gorgeous looking game and it's got a lot of technologies built in that just make it a very good game for the Steam Deck. First, let's take a look at socket power. At 720p, our APU consumes just about 44 to 45 watts and it maintains 60 FPS for nearly the entire benchmark run. But take a look at 1080p. Not only do we save almost 5 watts of overall power, we see considerable drops to nearly 35 watts in some sections of the run. So I guess that settles it. Hmm, sorry Abu, I guess we're gonna have to look a little bit deeper. How do the utilizations look? In blue, 720p CPU utilizations is incredibly high, fluctuating between 25% and 70% across the entire run. On average, 720p sees about 49% CPU utilization, and the 1080p scenario, it only sees about 31%. As we look at the GPU, things get a bit more chaotic. While gaming, GPUs boost as high and as long as possible, and in power and FPS capped scenarios, the GPU utilization bounces around quite a bit. With that said, we're looking at a moving average result to clean things up a bit, where we're averaging about 3 seconds worth of run for each of our data samples. At 720p and 60fps, the GPU is humming along at high utilizations, but 1080p gets to chug a bit slower since the GPU is allowed to take twice as long to generate a single frame. With Horizon Zero Dawn running at higher resolutions and lower frame rates, 
it looks like that's going to be a compelling option. With gorgeous scenery throughout the game and a more fluid fighting style than some other games that are out there, it looks like Aloy can save about 11% when it comes to battery life, so we can optimize our frame rates and get a little bit of extra eye candy and still save a few extra watts. Now let's put the pedal to the metal and check out F1 2020. When it comes to socket power, we see similar results as Horizon Zero Dawn during the test run, but the spread is much less significant. 720p pushes right up to that 45 watt power budget, but 1080p at 30 FPS, it's still up there guzzling some gas. F1 2020 doesn't appear to be CPU limited by any means, with both resolutions floating between 10 and 25% utilization. This usage is relatively flat for both scenarios, which shows just how optimized this game engine is. The GPU utilization does appear to be a bit more stable at 1080p at 30 frames, with much more considerable variation seen at 720p 60fps. With how each of these scenarios play out, I definitely recommend going with 720p at 60 frames per second. Judging by the 1080p footage that we've been seeing, man, F1 2020 just looks slow. 720p looks good, it feels great, and it only costs us about 6% more battery life. So sacrifice that battery life and get to enjoying the higher frame rate. <laughs> Guys, I am not a fan of MOBAs by any stretch, but it turns out Dota 2 actually performs very well on the 680M, even at the 6800U's rated 28 watts. Again, we see 1080p results staying very flat, right at 27 watts throughout the run, and 720p, it's pretty steady around 33 watts. Looking closely at CPU utilizations, both scenarios are very light on the CPU, but a trend is clear. 1080p hovers around 6% utilization, and 720p a bit more at 9%. GPU utilization, on the other hand, it's a pretty fascinating result. For 720p 60 frames, plenty of fluctuation is expected, but it does float anywhere between 30 and 80%. But at 1080p, we actually see many instances where the GPU can periodically idle out, suggesting that Full HD is surprisingly light running at 30 frames per second. Putting it all into context, Dota 2 plays exceptionally well on very low-end hardware. Depending on what's important to you, going with the lower resolution, more fluid experience, it's going to cost you about 16% more when it comes to battery life. I also went ahead and tested Borderlands 3, but I'll blast through the charts to save us a bit of time. Power consumption behaves similar to F1 2020, but the utilizations are a bit more nuanced. GPU utilizations line up similar to Horizon Zero Dawn, and CPU utilization is lighter than F1, but a bit heavier than Dota 2. But as most FPS games go, sacrificing battery life for a smooth gaming experience is paramount, so I'd definitely go with 720p 60fps. So let's answer Abu's question from the beginning of the video. Is it more efficient to run at 720p 60 frames or 1080p at 30 frames? Throughout our tests, 720p consumes about 10% more power than 1080p on average, sacrificing quality for frame rate. Pumping out those extra frames does come at a cost, which is a 57% increase in CPU utilization in order to keep the GPU fed at all times. That, in turn, bumps GPU utilization by around 26%. And that's about it. However, I do have a word of caution. Most handhelds that are out in this current generation don't consume much more than 28 watts for their APU. Even with the larger form factors like the AOK Zoe, I don't think that bumping up beyond 35 watts is going to really be possible, especially considering the heatsink size and the fan speeds that would be generated. But if the games you play play right around 28 watts or lower, I would definitely see all the results that we saw today apply to those same types of games. And that's the other half of the coin. You got to be able to actually limit your frame rate in order to see the exact same results that we saw. Some mechanisms to reduce power consumption for either the GPU or the CPU don't pan out the way that we like them to. As we saw in our Cyberpunk 2077 optimization video, we need to think outside of the box to manipulate our system and our games to work the way that we want them to. So if there's some games that you want to see me optimize for the Steam Deck, definitely let me know down in the comments. 
And that's all I've got to say about frame rates and resolutions and efficiency for this week. Let me know if there's any other types of topics y'all want me to cover down in the comments or check out the community tab. I like to post polls over there to see what you guys are interested in seeing. We've got a couple new GPUs coming to the test bench as well as some other product launches and computer builds that I've been working on. So definitely respond over there. But thank you guys for sticking to the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. We'll catch you in the next one.